Hello there and welcome to A-Level Further Maths. Here we're looking at first order differential equations. We can answer questions from exercise 7a. Here we're looking at the separating the variables way of solving first order differential equations. So let me show you how to do it. So, a first order differential equation contains only first differentials. And what we have to do is with those first differentials, we have to work our way back to the original function. So it's a differential equation we're given and we have to work out the original equation. In Pure Maths 2, you've already solved these equations by separating the variables technique if you've got that far in A-level maths yet. So remember what it looks like. If we have dy by dx equals, and then something to do with x and something to do with y on the right-hand side, then what we're going to do is separate those variables so that we can work back to what the original equation was before it was differentiated. So what we do in this case is we're going to divide by gy and multiply by dx. We're going to treat dy by dx as if it were a fraction, where dy was on the top of the fraction, dx was on the bottom of a fraction, and multiply to the right-hand side dx, and then g of y will be divided onto the left-hand side. So you can see what we've done here. We have separated the variables. That's why this technique is called separating the variables. We've moved y onto the side where dy is, and we've moved dx onto the side where the function of x is. You can see all the y's are on the left, all the x's are on the right. And now with this, we're now going to integrate both sides. We can integrate 1 over gy with respect to dy, and we can integrate f of x with respect to dx. Once you've integrated, you'll be left with an equation that can be rearranged to put into different forms, and then you can just rearrange it to whatever looks smartest for your final answer. Remember that the plus c parts could be anything at this stage. The possible functions are known as the family of solution curves. So when you do this um, technique, you only need to add c to one of the sides. You don't need to add c to both sides, um, because you could just group them together and just call it one, one c. You also need to find particular solutions if you're told information linking x and y, so um, that kind of uh, type of question where you're given a coordinate that the function goes through, you could then work out c by plugging an x in and y in and then working out what c is. Okay, so let's have a look at a first our first differential equation to solve. We've got dy by dx equals minus x over y. So let's use this technique of separating the variables to work out um, what the original equation was and then sketch members of the family of solutions. So that just means sketch the curve, a few different curves where you've got different values of c there. Okay, so first what we need to do then is separate the variables. We'll multiply y onto the left and multiply dx onto the right. So the y moves to the left and the x uh, dx moves to the right hand side. And now we can integrate those, so put integral symbols at the front of both of them, and now do the integration. On the left hand side it will become half y squared, and on the right hand side it will become minus a half x squared. And you only need to plus c to one of the sides of the equation. I suppose we should um, group this together, and we're trying to just now tidy this up in the best way possible. So we've got here y squared plus x squared equals 2c. Now this equation looks very familiar. It kind of looks like the equation of a circle because that's x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So I suppose if we just set 2c equal to r, then equal to r squared, then that's just going to give us uh, the equation of a circle. We just have to square root the 2 and square root the r, square root the c uh, to work out what the r is. So what it means by sketch the family of curves is just take a few different values for what c could be and then draw a few different curves. So we'll draw one curve when we set c equal to 1 or when we've set this 2c value equal to 1. When 2c is equal to when c is equal to 2 then you'll get 4 on the right hand side and then you'll get your r value being 2. It just means sketch a few different types of curves for different values of c. So there we are, that's what it means to sketch a family of curves. 
Okay, let's move on to the next one. Very similar to the one before, but it's now minus y over x. Let's see what happens with this one. So we'll multiply the dx onto the other side and divide the y onto the left-hand side. And it's now 1 over y and minus 1 over x. So the integral of these are going to be ln. So it's going to be ln y equals uh, minus ln x plus c. Let's now add the ln x onto the other side and tidy this up where possible. Use your laws of logs to multiply the x and the y together when you've got an addition of learns. And then we might want to um, undo the learn by eing both sides. Okay, and you're probably wondering why we've got the modulus signs around the uh, x and the y. Well, strictly speaking, we should have had those all the way through. So let's just put those in all the way through. And what can we do with it now? Well, what this is effectively saying is that x, y is either equal to plus or minus e to the c. So we'll write that instead. And then what we can do is then divide by the x uh, onto the right hand side. So it's y equals the plus or minus of e to the c over x. And then if we just replace e to the c, c is just a constant, isn't it? e is 2.718, so it's going to be 2.718 to the power of a constant, which is just another constant. So we can just effectively write e to the c as another constant, we'll call it capital A. So this is the type of graph we need to draw here, y equals plus or minus a over x. Uh, in this step, this step is common, replacing uh, of a constant involving several letters with a single letter, uh, a different letter ideally. Uh, make sure it is clear when you do this, make sure you do it in one clear step. And remember you cannot replace a variable term such as x in this way. It's just a constant term that you can replace when you've got multiple constant terms uh, interacting together. It's just a still another constant. So why did we have to include the modulus here? Well this is the equation we ended up with when using the modulus. Uh, it was y equals plus or minus uh, a over x. So if a was positive, if we rewrite it and differentiate it, we get uh, this expression here, group the x's, and we get exactly what we had. But if a was negative, and we differentiate, that negative will disappear as well. But then it comes back down there. So both possibilities uh, you can differentiate to, um, to get what we started with, to give the original function. So therefore we need to include the modulus or we could lose an answer. So it's plus or minus uh, a over x. So when drawing out the family of curves, it's going to be y equals plus or minus a over x. Um, so we need to include the plus and minus in our graph. So it's not just in two of the quarters, it's going to be in all four of the quarters. So it's going to be that part and that part, because it's going to be plus or minus a over x. So just like that. So this is the family of curves here. Increasing or decreasing the value of a, or in fact e to the c, will move the curves in or out. So there we are. So that's how we do uh, these types of questions here. So I've got a couple for you to have a go at practicing on here. When we have to put a um, certain coordinate in to work out c afterwards as well. So pause the video and give these two questions a go. Okay, so let's have a go at this first one here. Then we have dy by dx equals uh, this expression on the right-hand side. I'm just going to separate them on the right-hand side before moving any of them around. So it's going to be minus x over 9 minus x squared times y. Uh, and you can write that multiplied by y on the side because if you multiply it on the top here, you could multiply it on the side as well. So let's now move everything onto the same side. So I'm going to divide by y onto the left and times by x onto the right hand side. So it'd be minus x over 9 minus x squared uh, dx. So here, between here and here, I've divided by y and I've multiplied by dx. 
Okay, let's now integrate both sides, and we can just do that by putting an integral at the front of both sides. The integral of the left-hand side would be ln modulus y equals, and then on the left-hand side, it's going to be a ln type integral. On the bottom, it would be minus 2x, so it would be a half ln uh, 9 minus x squared, and those will be in modulus signs as well, plus c. Okay, the minus will counteract with that minus down there, so yes, it will be uh, positive there. So let's now subtract it onto the left-hand side. And let's now simplify what we've got on the left-hand side. The half moves in as a root, and then we can divide the two because that's how you deal with subtracting ln. So it's going to be y over the square root of 9 minus x squared. All in modular symbols equals c. So therefore, I'm just going to write this then as um, y over square root of 9 minus x squared equals uh, e to the c, but I'm going to call that a new letter, we'll call it capital A. I'm just going to use some of this side here. And then I'm going to multiply the, um, the square root of 9 minus x squared onto the right hand side, but because, hold on, there's a modulus here, so this could be plus or minus a, so it'd be plus or minus c. So therefore, y is going to equal plus or minus a and then square root of 9 minus x squared. I've just multiplied the square root of 9 minus x squared onto the right-hand side. Good, there we are. That's the answer to this question. So be careful when you're doing learns, you need modular symbols in there, and then when you get rid of the modular symbols, it turns into a plus or minus. Okay, we'll now answer part B underneath. So when x equals 2, y equals 5, Find a particular solution if the curve goes through 2, 5. So it's going to be 5 equals plus or minus a square root uh, 9 minus 4. So that would be the square root of 5. So that means root 5 is our value for a. It's definitely positive root 5 because there's no way it's going to be um, a negative. Actually, if it's plus or minus, yeah, plus or minus, uh, if it equals plus or minus a, then a equals plus or minus root 5. So therefore, the um, particular solution is going to be y equals plus or minus uh, the square root of 45 minus 5x squared. What I've done there is I've just uh, factorized in, in, we've got two roots, we've got this root and we've got the top root, so I've just moved them inside the same square root afterwards. So there we are, that's the answer to this question from page 151, exercise 7a. There's a second video for exercise 7a, maybe you wait and watch that video, uh, and then you can have a go at the full exercise 7a, and use your judgment as to whether you're going to use the separating variable technique or the new one in exercise in the part 2 of this video for exercise 7a. Lovely, thanks very much for watching.